Okay, now I'm going to show you, this is the additional situational practice tool. Do you find this familiar? Yes, right, majority of you have already looked at it. Some of you have actually even done it and submitted it to me. So I'm going to use this as the base for my modeling so that we're all familiar with it. I don't have to go too much into, uh, you know, orienting you to the stimulus, okay? So this is basically about a letter to residents of a particular housing estate about the lost pet or dog, okay? So this is going to be a formal letter. Do you all agree with me, right? Formal simply because I'm writing to adults, right, who are older than me and who are living in a particular estate. I don't know them very well. And in fact, I don't know them at all. So I cannot write an informal email because that will sound too rude and casual, okay? So very quickly, let's go over here. Okay, so I'm going to go on to highlight some important points. Huh? So imagine that you are the lady in the pictures, okay? So I'm going to identify uh, here. I am the lady in the pictures, right? Okay, is this the correct lady that I've just identified? Am I correct? Yes? Okay, now is there a name for this lady? Right, can someone raise your hands if you can tell me the name of the lady? Okay, uh, Gabriel, please. Okay, I'm sorry. Can you just, uh, can you say that again? Sorry. Hold on. Uh. Uh, okay. Maybe I haven't got my volume. Okay, say that again, UK bro. Sorry? Auntie Karen. Okay, very good. Thank you. Right, excellent. Uh, do you all agree with him? Is it Auntie Karen? Okay, now I'm going to highlight here Auntie Karen, but... Uh, just a quick note. Nah. Do you think that I can use Auntie Karen as a name in my email later? I cannot, right? Because remember, um, I, am, I am Karen, but I can't call myself Auntie Karen, right? Um, I need to introduce myself. So what do I need to add to Auntie Karen or rather what do I need to change Auntie Karen into, Dia? You must give Auntie Karen a surname. Very good. And do I keep the word Auntie? No, you must okay. just say Karen yeah. followed good. by her surname. Exactly. So I'm just going to go right ahead and modify it here. All right. And I'm just going to add a generic surname now, okay? Can you all see me as I annotate on the screen? Can, right? Okay. So notice, uh, I'm doing this like very, very quickly, but I'm slowing it down and explaining it to you. That's why it's going to take a bit longer, right? But in the actual setting when you're doing this, right, it's very, very fast, right? I'm doing this as I go along. Okay. So I know that I am Karen Tan, Okay. So I'm just going to note it down here. And uh, don't worry, I'll print this out for all of you, right? When I finish annotating it. Then your letter is to the residents of your surrounding estate. Okay? So this is who I'm writing to. This is my audience. Okay? Okay? And this is my purpose. Okay? This is my purpose. Right? So st straight off the bat, uh, the reason why I chose this example is because it's a little bit different from what we've done so far. Now, residents of your surrounding estate, what is going to be the salutation? So that's the important question, right? What is the salutation I'm going to use? Am I going to use dear residents of my surrounding estate? Am I going to do that? Yes or no? Not or shake your heads. Very good. I'm seeing all of you shaking your heads, right? Never use the title of a person. So, dear manager of Sunshine Estate, no. Uh, dear, you know, teacher in charge of dear discipline mistress, no. You never use the title. You always use either a name or, in this case, since there's no name and there are many people, what do you use? Clarissa? Dear residents? No. Though, though I think that that's acceptable, I'm not going to fault you for that, but I want something that can be used in every situation. Right? Residents can't be used in every situation because it's not always about residents. Right, Zoe? Madam or Mr. Right, dear sir oh, slash... Mr. Um, Mr. Or Mr. Yes, okay. Dear sir slash madam. Okay? So whenever, remember, I don't know the recipient's name, Right? and I want to keep the email formal and generic, meaning it's not specifically titled to someone, I will use Dear Sir, Madam. So audience uh, is going to be, I'm just going to write down here for ease of reference later, Dear Sir slash Madam. Okay? Why? Because I don't know the gender, I don't know the names of the people that live in the blog. Not all of them, right? 
I'm not God, right? I'm not omniscient. Huh? I can't see everybody living in a block and know them all by name, right? That's not possible. So I need to use a generic salutation, dear sir slash madam. So far, everybody following? All good? Okay, excellent. Now we have audience, we have purpose. Context is letter. I'm going to change that to an email, right? So this is going to be a formal email again because I'm writing to adults whom I'm not familiar with and I want to keep a respectful tone. So I have context, audience, purpose. Next step, I will go into the six content points. So I want to see you annotating like this in your exam scripts. Is that clear, everybody? Because this will make sure that you don't miss anything and you're very systematic in the way you approach your email writing, okay? So description, that's one. How you can tell. That's two. Okay, I may not end up with six in the end. Uh, I will see. Uh, when and where. So that's three and four. You discovered the dog was missing. Any incentives for finding the job? The dog is five. And how you can be contacted? That's six. Okay, so very nicely, it lands on six content points. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to identify uh, all the various uh, points that I want to add in. Okay, so point number one, I'm looking for the description uh, of the dog's appearance, right? Okay, um, so over here, um, can anyone tell me what is the description I should include in to this section? Brian, go ahead. Um, the dog is a brown and white Jack Russell. Okay, very good. It's a brown yes. and white Jack Russell. I'm sorry, carry on, please. Uh, Did you want to say something blue else? blue collar mm -hmm. and a name tag on it. Okay, so it's got a blue collar with a name tag on it. Okay, excellent. Anything else, Brian? Um, the, dog, the, the dog's name is called Coco. Okay, um, that's fine. I don't need that. Why, am I, why do I not need that? Um, that's optional because I'm looking for a description. Okay, the dog's name is a bonus but not a requirement. Okay, so now I'm just looking for the appearance of the dog. Why would Coco be significant? Well, if the name tag on the on the collar says Coco, lah, right? So that's a bonus, okay? But it's not strictly speaking required, okay? So I, I'm sure everybody agrees. Huh? By the way, do you all know what is Jack Russell? Is, what, what is Jack Russell? Lah? You all know or not? Yeah, you, you know. Huh? Okay, Solomon, what is Jack Russell? Huh? It's like a small dog. It's a breed of a dog, right? Yeah, it's the one. breed, okay? It's the breed of a dog. Okay, there are different breeds, right? You identify a dog by its breed, right? It can be a Jack Russell, it can be a Golden Retriever, it can be a Labradoodle. There are many different breeds of dogs and they all look different, right? So telling the breed of the dog will help people who know such things identify the dog much, e much more easily. Do you understand? Okay, so that's part of the appearance. Good. So this is my point one. Okay, my point one has two parts, right? It's broken up to two parts here. Okay, point number two, how can you tell that it is Karen's missing dog? Okay, so how can you tell that it is Karen's missing dog? Okay, so here is the interesting part, right? Uh, 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 Irina, are you raising your hands or are you just tying your hair? Okay, I see you're just tying your hair. Okay, um, anybody? Anybody? Actually, it is a combination of point one, you know. Okay, I just give you a hint. Uh. It's actually a combination of point one, you know. Anyone wants to tell me how I know that this is um, is uh, Aunt Karen's dog? Shani, go ahead. Right, I see you nodding your head. Yeah. <coughs> uh, with, uh, he's wearing a blue collar with a name tag saying Coco on it. Very good, right? So the name tag, right, will identify the dog by his name. So number one, right, is also number two. Okay, so I'm going to change this to number two. And then I'm going to link it to the name Coco, right? Because Coco is on the top here. So this is not the easy situational writing pieces that we are used to. Huh? Here we see the points are broken up and need to be recombined in a meaningful way. right? So we have to reorder it in order to make it make sense. So do you all follow? Not all situational writings are going to be that straightforward. You may need to recombine the points and arrange them in different orders to make it more you know, organized and clear in the way that you present your information. Okay, so let's move on. So now, now I've got one. Tick. I've got two. Tick. When and where you discovered the dog was missing is going to be over here. Okay? Right? Can someone tell me the date and the time and the location? So three and four will be together. Right? Nicholas, go. Uh, 
Tuesday at 10 July. Mm -hmm. All right. Eight hours later. Okay, so what is eight hours later? After 9 a.m. Uh, okay, so 9 a.m., eight hours later, what time is it? Anyone? Simple arithmetic. Uh, Joshua? 5 p.m. Okay, right. So it's going to be 5 p.m. on Tuesday, 10th July. And where, Joshua, you might as well answer this question. Where is this the location where he she found out that he was missing? Joshua? At home. Yep, at home, right? Okay, so this is my point number three and my point number four. Very straightforward, right? Okay, but uh, notice that I need to do some simple arithmetic uh, in order to get to the answer. So you cannot write eight hours later. Do you understand why you cannot write eight hours later, boys and girls? Right, because there is nowhere in your email that states what time from eight hours. Right, there's no 9 p.m., 9 a.m. anywhere in your email. So you need to do that arithmetic and arrive at that time. And this time is important because people need to know what time they would have observed this lost stray dog wandering around, right? Okay, okay. so we've got three and four. Okay, five, any incentives? Now, can anyone give me a simpler word for incentive? Right, this word's quite grand and quite big, right? Can I have a different word? Uh, Clarissa, go ahead. A reward? Yep. Okay, so I'm just going to scribe the word reward above there for all of you to reference later. So what is the reward for finding the dog? Hmm? Anyone? Kanish, go ahead. $100 cash. Okay, where do you get $100 cash from? From uh, Karen. Where? Where did you find it? Uh, it's not in the passage. It's not in the passage. Very good. So did you just invent it? Hello? Yes, yes, very good. And you are right to invent it because it says here, I will offer a reward, right? It doesn't specify, right? So down here, the question mark is your point number, your point number five. Huh? What is the reward? Maybe I just state it's a $100 reward. Okay, so I can come up with a reward. Remember, everybody, when the information is not explicitly stated in the text, you will need to make it up very much like Karen's full name, right? We didn't know Karen's last name, so we need to give her a last name. We created it. So in when pieces of information are not clearly visible in the text, please invent something and please be realistic. La. Don't give $1 million reward, la, right? Be realistic. La. You're not going to spend a million dollars to get your lost dog back, right? So be, be, you know, be practical and realistic in your reward, okay? And point number six, how can you be contacted? Okay, how can you be contacted? Uh, very simple, quickly. Yes. Yeah, Adrian, go. Uh, they can contact her through her handphone at 9864-4321. Yep. Very good. That's right, okay? So that is, the, that is the way that they can contact. Okay, so notice how I have structured my points is very similar to here. I follow the order. I try not to deviate from it. But I need to recombine certain points, like points one and two had to be recombined in order for them to make sense, right? So I'm going to check that all six points and then I'm going to start writing my email proper, okay? So I'm going to do it here, if that's all right, okay? So I just recap, huh? I did your purpose audience context. I specified the salutation. I specified the purpose and I specified the six content points. Then I went into my passage and I marked it out clearly and I numbered it. Then I came back over to my checklist here and I checked it off to make sure that I got all six content points. Now I am ready to embark on my writing and this is the this is the part that should be very fast, okay? Because the format's in my head, right? I don't have to think too much already. I have the information, I can start to write. So what's the first thing that I should write? Please, someone, quickly, okay? And and give me the, the content. What's the first thing I should write? Uh, Nicholas, go. Salutation. No, incorrect. What's the first thing I should write? Um, yes, Adrian. Date. Date. And what date should I use here? What date uh, should I use? Tuesday, 10 July, 6. Do I need to write the word Tuesday? No. no. Okay, don't need that. Okay, so I'm just going to write. Can I, is it okay if I just write below here? Okay, then you'll just follow along with me. Huh? Okay, so I'm just going to align everything to the left. I pretend this is the margin, okay? of your full paper. Please remember, every element of your email should be aligned to 
the left, the left. Do not sign off on the right. Do not align to the right for anything. Everything is aligned to the left margin, okay? Not that it's super important, but just for neatness, okay? So 10th July. Sorry, was that a year? No, right? Was that a year? No. 2009, right? Yeah, okay. So 2009. Oh gosh, this is old. Okay. Yes, uh, Duncan, do you have a question? I think it might be better to write 11th of July. I think 5 p.m. might be a bit too late. Um. Okay, I, I consider your point. But remember that as an anxious pet owner, you would want to get the word out as quickly as possible, right? I would argue that I would not want to wait for the next day to send out this very important email. Okay, but thank you. I register your point. Um, Jairus? Do you have a question, Jairus? If we already wrote this uh, situational writing, do we still have to do it again? Uh, yes, you do. Because this will be considered your corrections. Okay. okay? Mm. All right. So please follow along with me because I want you to get used to the rhythm and the routine of it until it becomes muscle memory. La, right? Remember, situational writing should not tax your creative brain. Uh. This should be like, like muscle memory, you're doing it like automatically and you follow the forms very easily, right? So do it as many times as possible. Exercise yourself until you get very good at it, okay? So um, the more times you do it, the better. I know it's tedious. I know it's not the most exciting thing in the world, but remember, repetition builds muscle memory and mastery, okay? So persevere. Uh, 10th July 2009, right? So that's my date. Then my salutation, remember, is dear sir slash madam, Okay? And then I want to leave a liner between the date and the salutation. And I put a little comma here, right? Um, dear sir, madam, again, because I'm writing to residents whom I do not know. I don't know their gender. I don't know their names. So dear sir, madam, okay? Um, uh, let's see. Can I just call somebody randomly? Angel, are you there? Okay, Angel, can you tell me what is the very first sentence I must always write in a formal email after the salutation? Unmute I, yourself. Sorry? I would like to introduce myself. Uh, okay, don't don't say I would like to introduce myself. Always use a particular format that I, I have taught you. I don't want I would like to introduce myself. I want a shorter form. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, Joshua? Allow me to introduce myself. Allow me to introduce myself. Okay, I think that's polite enough. Allow me to introduce myself I'm trying to write as neatly as I can okay I apologize for my rather untidy handwriting huh? okay and I'm trying to squeeze everything if you're writing on a piece of foolscap paper and you have more space on the right right continue writing okay don't just go to the next line because I go to the next line because I'm constrained by the space of the of the iPad okay so allow me to introduce myself is great awesome full stop I emphasize it ends the sentence allow me to introduce myself full stop Okay, why is it important to introduce myself at this point in time? Why? Gabriel, why is it important to introduce myself? Because the people that are writing to do not know Exactly, right? You're not a celebrity, right? You're not a celebrity. Or rather, Auntie Karen is not a celebrity. If you just say, hi, I'm Auntie Karen or something, you know, people won't know who you are, right? So you need to introduce yourself. So what is the next line after allow me to introduce myself? Can anyone tell me what's the next line that follows? Allow me to introduce myself. Hmm. Okay. Let's have uh let's have okay. Clarissa, go ahead. I'm Karen Tan. Okay, that's the first part. I I'm am Karen Tan. Karen Tan. And one of here, the residents. So to say ah, who you are. A resident, comma, a resident. Oh, Very good. Yeah. Remember the identity is tied to your purpose, right? So you're writing to ask residents. So you must be a resident yourself. A resident of, of what? Of. So I come over here. So I'm writing to the residents of my surrounding estate, right? Yeah. Okay. So over here, right? Okay. Can you see here? Can you see? So what is this estate? This estate is block 3, Aukang Central, right? Okay. So... I'm going to use this information. So you see, you have to pay attention and extract all the contextual information that is provided in a picture. 
Don't ignore anything. Everybody clear? Give me an okay sign if you understand what I'm saying. Okay? Don't leave anything on the plate, right? It's like oral. Remember, we're talking about oral. Like I prepare you a steak dinner with all the different elements in the picture. Don't leave the steak uneaten. Take everything into you, okay? Mm -hmm. So in this case, right, the onions over there, a resident of block three, Aogang Central, okay? And this will tell everybody that I'm writing to that we are all living in the same block or in the same area, okay? And therefore, I am going to be more attentive to this email because it's written by someone who lives in the same estate as me, okay? So allow me to introduce myself. I'm Karen Tan, a resident of Block 3, Alcon Central, right? Next should come what? Again, I'm just testing all of you. Huh? Kanish, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Fong, I have a question. Oh, yes, go ahead. Please go ahead. Uh, isn't BLK is an acronym for Block? Ah, okay, no, there is no need for you to spell it out if it is already in acronym here. Can you see? Whatever is in the picture, you can safely copy without worry of penalty. If it's abbreviated in the picture, it can be abbreviated in your response. Is, does that answer your question? Okay, oh, great. Yes, awesome. Duncan, what about you? I have What's a question. question. Yes, go um, ahead. If I don't have paper on me right now, mm -hmm. then what do I do? Then you will need to watch a replay of this video later, follow the same instructions, and write it out on a piece of full paper when you can find one, okay? But for now, just pay attention. All right, thank you for that question. I hope that answers other people's questions as well. Okay, uh, so... Right now, what's the next thing that comes after my introduction? That's very important. Claire, go ahead. What's the next thing? I am writing to. Yes, very good. You. Very good. I am writing to is always the purpose statement, right? I am writing to. Do not say I would like because I would like is informal, right? So I am writing to. Okay, and then I can then look at the. Look at the purpose statement, huh? okay? I am writing to, okay, asking, uh, ask, asking. Uh, what is a formal word for asking? What's a formal word? Do you say like, I would like to ask? Or I am writing to ask you? No, right? It's too informal. What's the formal word for ask? Nicholas? Enquire. En no, enquire is for information. Now you're asking them to do you a favor. So it is not an inquiry, Solomon? Help? No, no, it's a verb. I'm asking for a verb now. I'm not asking for a noun. Help is a noun, not a verb. I am writing to Javen. Go. Request. Yes, there you go. Thank you very much. Because when you're asking for help in a formal way, I'm requesting for assistance. I'm requesting for help. Okay. So please memorize this word. Okay, whenever you, uh, your purpose is to get someone to do something for you, right? The formal way to ask is request, okay? The formal way to tell someone is inform, right? So if you're writing to inform them, then it's formal. If you're writing to re request for something, then it's formal, okay? So I'm writing to request. So what are you requesting? You are re requesting for their help, right? Your help in finding and returning my lost dog. Okay? So that is a paraphrase of the purpose statement that you find here. Okay, don't worry, I'll come back to it. Huh? So I'm asking them to return your dog if they find it. So... In other words, before they can return, right, they must first find it, right? So, I am writing to request your help in finding, again, I use the same word as in the purpose statement, and returning, right, again, the same word as in the purpose statement, my lost dog. Okay, then the next paragraph will be all the information about your dog so that they can look out for it, find it, and hopefully return it. Everybody following so far? So, it's, it's, it's by right, nah, this entire process nah, that I've just taken about 10 minutes to go through with you. Huh? It should take about 2 minutes only. You should be doing this really quickly. Right? Because remember, you have a limit of about 15 to 20 minutes for this section of your paper. Okay? So now I go to next paragraph. Huh? Second paragraph. Right? 
then I start to fit in all my information. Okay? My dog is, all right, then I just copy what I've written here, right? A brown and white Jack Russell. Are you all writing along with me? Very good. Jack Russell, by the way, is a proper noun. So I must capitalize it. Otherwise, I will get penalized for punctuation errors. Huh? So Jack Russell, a brown and white Jack Russell. This is my point number one. I'm going to label that for ease of reference. So I'm ticking off all my points as I write it. Okay. Then I look at the second pointer. How can you tell that it is Karen's missing dog? You can tell it is my dog, right? So I'm just following the exactly according to the question. So how can you tell that it is Karen's missing dog? You can tell it is my dog by, by, and again, I just copy here, right? The blue collar with the name tag Coco on it, okay? By its blue collar, okay? And this is my point number two, right? with a name tag, okay? And the name tag should spell Coco on it, okay? So here, blue collar with name tag Coco on it is my point number two, okay? Write along with me, okay? This is one of those YouTube videos where you just do along with the person, right? Okay, I think of it as a craft video. Okay, all good so far, everybody? We are crafting our email together, huh? Okay, end up with a nice end product. Huh? Okay, yes, Gabriel. So what is after the word name? Is it a full stop or comma? What is after which word? The word Coco. name tag. Oh, name tag. Okay, I make it clearer. Huh? Comma, comma. Right, so this is an A positive. A positives are statements that add information. Right, so what is, the, what is on the name tag? Coco. So Coco is actually the additional information that will help them to determine whose dog it is. Okay, so I fitted one and two already. I'm already more than halfway done with my email, okay? Then after this, we'll take a break, right? After this, we'll take a break. Okay, so when and where you discovered the dog was missing, right? So over here, I'm going to use the information, right? I discovered my dog was missing. So you see, again, I just follow exactly what the sentence is saying. I don't try to innovate. I don't try to invent my own sentence. I follow when and where you discovered the dog was missing, I'll just say, I discovered the dog was, my dog was missing. I discovered my dog was missing. Today, right? And again, why can I write today? Clarissa, why can I just condense my answer to today? Because she wrote the letter on 10 July, which is the mm. day she lost her job. Yes. So there we go. And if you are not feeling secure, if you're worried the teacher might not see that you wrote the date on top, right? You can just write the date again to be safe. And I think that's always a good practice. Always write the date anyway. Today, comma, 10th July. Again, A positive, right? Two commas act like brackets, right? 10th July, 2009, comma, at 5 p.m right, which is, as Joshua calculated for us, a number of hours after she last saw the dog, right? So, this is my at home, okay? Sorry, no full stop here. And let me highlight that for you. This is my point three. This is my point four. Point three... Point four, okay? Now, the interesting thing about using the word at home is that this is linked to something else in the earlier part of my email. Can anyone tell me what at home is linked to? Otherwise, I won't know where my home is, right? But what tells me where my home is? User, glad to see you responding. Uh, the block three are concentrated. Yes, very good. So, can you see how pieces of information that I think may not be important uh, can link to other pieces of information that are really important. So don't leave anything on the plate, right? Make sure you use up as much of the information that's provided in the picture stimulus as you can. Same principle for oral, 
Same principle for writing, right? Use everything that's given and more. Okay, so number four, number three, done. I'm almost finishing in the home stretch already. Okay, so then five and six, any incentives for finding the dog? So if you find my dog, right? If you find my dog, comma, and I will follow Kanisk's suggestion, I will offer a reward of $100. And again, I don't need to spell this out. I can write the numbers because the number is bigger than 20, right? And any dollar amount in situational writing can be written out as numbers, okay? Of $100, full stop, okay? And finally, point number six, how can you be contacted? I can be contacted, okay, uh, on my handphone, on my handphone at, and then I'm going to copy the number uh, 9864432196443321. 9864432 I wonder if this is anybody's number. Please don't try to call this number. Okay. I don't want you to hook up with anybody weird. Okay. So 9864432121 is the number. Okay. Yes, Skylar. On my handphone or through my handphone. Oh, okay. Uh, you can be contacted. Oh, okay. Uh, on on this number, right? Uh, through this number, that's fine. Okay, fine. Skylar says, uh, I think through is better. I agree. Okay. Through my handphone. Thank you, Skylar. Though you will find that in many cases, prepositions are interchangeably used. They can be used uh, more than one answer can be permissible. But I agree with you. I think through is better. It sounds better. So I'm going to substitute that with through. Thank you, Skylar. That was a good contribution. Okay. Um, any other questions before I go on to the last paragraph? We are finishing with D. Literally two more sentences and we are done. Okay. Yes, Solomon? Do we have to highlight the words? Sorry, can you say that again? Do we have to highlight the words? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So reward of 100 is 0. 0.5 and... Uh, Contacted through my handphone is 0. 0.6, right? Just to be thorough, okay? Uh, and to make sure that I have not left any point out. Remember, be very careful, okay? Your greatest enemy is yourself in terms of your carelessness. So you want to minimize that through the use of, you know, strategies like marking and annotating and making sure that you don't leave anything out. Last paragraph, hooray! Then we can take a break, okay? Awesome, everybody. You're doing so well today. Good job, Okay? Proud of you. If you could only be so quiet in the classroom. Okay. Um, yes, yes. I see a number of smirks on your faces. Yes. Okay. Now let's go. Last paragraph. Okay. Now this one um, is always templated, meaning it's standard one. There's no change. Okay. You always follow the same formula. So again, like the first paragraph, the last paragraph is like standard. It's like two, pet, you know, the buns of a burger. They're always the same buns. You can put different fillings inside the bun, right? But the buns are always the same, okay? So you can have lobster burger, hamburger, cheese burger, you know, steak burger, you know, chicken burger. But the burger, pack, the, the burger like buns are always the same, okay? So keep the buns the same. Uh, so in this case, the bottom bun, what's the first sentence I must always use? As a resident of Chaogang Central, I Yes, have... yes. Thank oh. you very much. You are writing to them, right? But you haven't yet stated who they are, right? So as residents of Block 3, Aukang Central, right? Because they are residents, that's why they can help you, right? Because they live there, that's why they can look out for you, right? As residents. Okay, Claire, do you understand why you're wrong? I'm not writing to dog owner. I'm writing to the residents, okay? Yeah. Uh, finally, after I don't know how many trials and tribulations, as residents... Because remember, this is where I bring in the title of the person I'm writing to. As manager of, as, you know, discipline mistress of, as, you know, teacher in charge of, as residents of, right? Okay. So then I bring in the identity of who I'm writing to. That's very important because their identity is what gives them the power to help me. Okay. Because of who they are. That's why they can help me. Do you all understand? This follows the same pattern, whatever formal email you're writing. Okay. So as residents of, of, Block three, 
Hougang Central. Right, because they're there, they can help me. Ah, uh, then I hope. I hope. And remember, this is a formal request. So I hope that you can help me find and return my dog. Full stop. Got it? So I repeat my purpose statement and I phrase it as a request, a call to action. Remember call to action? I'm calling them to act on my behalf. And what is the action? Finding and returning my dog. Got it, everybody? You see the, the sequencing here? Beautifully, elegantly crafted, clear email that fulfills its function and that anybody who reads will be able to act on. Okay, they'll know what to do straight away. Okay, right then. What's the last line that Javier said just now? Javier, say it loud and clear. Finally, you can say it. Thank you for your kind attention. Yes. Thank you, Javier, for your kind attention. Very good. Finally, Javier's line comes in. Why? Because they could just as easily delete your email as spam, right? So you're very appreciative that they have taken the time to read your email. Right? So thank you for your kind attention, right? You don't want people to randomly just throw your email into spam or you know delete it out of hand, right? So thank you for your kind attention. So again, let's highlight a few important points here. I hope that you can help me find and return my dog is the call to action. This is the end purpose statement, okay? Just as there was a beginning purpose statement, there is an end purpose statement and it's a call to action. And then your, thank you for your kind attention, is your polite ending. So remember there was a beginning polite, right? Remember the bun, right? The top bun and the bottom bun, they look almost the same. Top bun was, allow me to introduce myself. That's your polite statement, okay? Bottom bun, your polite statement is, thank you for your kind attention. Okay, so top bun, bottom bun, uh, mirror each other in some ways. They are very similar, though not identical. Please uh, don't go and put your, you know, uh, allow me to introduce myself again. Uh. Huh? Lo Xuan Yi, understand? Do not introduce yourself twice, right? You're not schizophrenic. Uh. You don't have multiple personalities. Uh. Okay, let's move on. Okay, let's end off with this sentence. And how do I sign off? There are two ways for this email I can sign off. There are two ways actually. Two ways I can sign off. Remember, this has to do with your audience, right? Who am I um, writing to? Also determines how I sign off. Uh, Dia? Yours faithfully. Mm, very good. This is the only case you use yours faithfully. Is that clear, everybody? When the information for the audience is unclear, you can use yours faithfully, right? But in every other situation, and even in this situation, you can also use what's the other one that's the most universal for all formal emails, right? Uh, Jairus? Sorry, sorry. Somebody said something. Uh, okay, Jairus, go ahead, Jairus. Yeah, sincerely. Yeah, okay. So leave a line and then end. Again, alignment always on the left. Yours, sincerely. Please, 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 I beg of you. Spell sincerely correctly, okay? For our next spelling, uh, I'm going to add sincerely in as, as an additional word. Uh, okay, because some of you are still spelling it wrongly, okay? Sincerely. So the next 20 words will be 21, uh, okay? Yours sincerely, uh. okay? Yes, Shani? Can I put your resident? Huh? Your residence? You mean the residence belong to you? You mean <laughs> the owner of the block? Hello? Huh? Lo Shen Yi? Your zany answers never fail to surprise me. Eh? No. Okay. I'm sorry. La. There are places for creativity and permissiveness. Situational writing is not one of them. Right? We need to keep ourselves clearly tied to the format and not introduce zany ideas because they will overturn our ship. Okay? There's a very fine balance here. Please follow the pattern. Okay? I'm sorry. Eh? Just that in this particular case, you cannot be too creative and zany. Eh? Okay? But I appreciate the thought that went into that. Okay, Shani, thank you. Okay, bro? Hmm? Shouldn't the yours is the sincerely be capital? Uh, no, no. Don't need. Yeah, not necessary. Uh, Claire? Yours sincerely, Karen Tan. Okay, thank you. Please don't write Auntie Karen. I repeat, this is a major error. 
you are nobody's auntie. Eh? Is that clear? You are nobody's auntie. You're only auntie to Lily. Lily calls you auntie. But no, you know, imagine an old grandma who lives in that block calling you auntie. That would really be inappropriate. So please do not put auntie here, right? You have to put the full name, Karen Tan, right? Who is a resident. And how do I know she's a resident? Or you wrote on there, what? I'm a resident of Block 3, Alkang Central. Okay, so who am I? I'm Karen Tan. Okay, everybody clear?